in your hearts this morning. Just as this song says, it's not about you, it's about Jesus. We want to do things His way. We surrender to Him this morning. You surrender to Him this morning. Lift your hands this morning. Lift them up high before the Lord. Lord, I surrender to you. We surrender to you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. We surrender to you. Oh, Lord, our hearts, our minds, our body, our souls, our spirit, Lord God, our strength. God, everything that we have, we surrender to you. Hallelujah. Our actions, Lord God, our mouths, Lord Jesus, our eyes, Lord God, our hearing. God, let it be pleasing to you, Lord God. We surrender it all to you. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Lamb. Hallelujah. Glory. Somebody praise the Lord this morning. Somebody lift their voices to the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so this morning. Hallelujah. Glory to your precious name, Father. We praise you. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Can you imagine with me this morning? The angels in heaven are rejoicing and praising the Lord. And hallelujah, one day we will be up there with him. And we'll rejoice along with him and praise him. The Bible says there's multitudes and multitudes, unnumbered multitudes in heaven, praising God and worshiping. Hallelujah. And here comes the Lamb of God. Oh, Lord, that was slain from the foundation of this world. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We praise you. We glorify you. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Yeshua, Amashiach. We praise you. We glorify you. The Messiah, the Christ, the Lord, the Holy One. We praise you. Glory. Glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Lamb. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. I want you to turn to somebody. I want you to greet them, and I want you to say, I'm a Bible-thumping, pew-jumping, Jesus-loving, blood-bought, red-hot, soul-redeeming, shout-screaming, overcoming child of God. If you don't remember anything, just remember you're an overcoming child of God. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> Whatever I say. Praise the Lord. You may be seated when you can this morning. Hallelujah. I just want to have a little fun with you. Praise the Lord. I'm glad that I believe in the Word of God. If you have a problem with the Word, then you have a problem with God. Because the Word is God. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Brother Rick, if you come, Brother Ron, if you would come this morning, receive the morning tithes and offering. Ask that you you give for the glory of God for this church. Bless you this morning. Hallelujah. Brother Paul Garcia, would you stand and pray over the offering? Praise the Lord.
this morning, I want to share with you what the Lord has put in my heart. And he's even changed some things in my message that I want to share with you. In the book of John, the 17th chapter, there is a prayer that Jesus prays. So if you would like to turn there to the book of John, the 17th chapter, I'll not read every verse, but I, I will read the first and second verse, and then sixth verse, ninth verse, and the 14th. And the reason why I do that is not because I want to skip the word, but because of time. And so I want to share this with you this morning. The book of John, St. John, the 17th chapter, beginning in verse 1. This is an important message, and I want you to hear this message this morning because I believe that we are in the last days, in the last of the last days. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you get the word, if you can stand for the reading of the word. These words spoke Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify your son that your son also may glorify you. As you have given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as you have given him. Verse 6, if you will. I have manifested your name unto the men which you have gave me out of the world. Yours they were, and you gave them to me. And they have kept your word. Verse 9, I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which you have given me. For they are thine. Verse 14, I have given them your word. And the world has hated them. Because they are not of this world. Even as I am not of the world. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this word this morning. Your word tells us that your word is a lamp unto our feet, a light unto our path. Holy Spirit, I cannot preach without the, the anointing of God. And I need you, Holy Spirit to anoint your servant and anoint our ears to hear what thus saith the Lord. And I pray that our minds would be open to you, our hearts would receive your word, that we would eat it up and live it. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. This chapter, the whole chapter, and I've only read part of the chapter. There's more to it, and we'll get to it in another time. I don't think we're going to get to it very much of it anyway. But this is the longest prayer that is recorded in the Word of God that Jesus prays. Now, it's not the longest prayer he's prayed, but it's the longest recorded prayer that Jesus prayed. And he prayed by looking up to heaven. And he said, Father, the hour has come. When I said that word, when I read that word, the Holy Spirit really spoke to my heart. Jesus was talking about in a few hours from that time that he spoke this prayer, that he would be beaten and crucified on the cross and he would die three days later he would rise from the grave 
So when Jesus referred to this, Father, the hour has come, Jesus knew before the foundation of the universe, before the foundation of the world, that he would go to a cross. He knew it. He knew that there would be one of the 12 that would that was a son of perdition, that was the one that turned away from him. The Bible tells us in chapters before that Jesus was preaching about the bread of life. He said, I am the bread of life. Unless you eat this bread, you'll not have eternal life. And so they... There were those that were there that were so mad at him. Even followers of Jesus at that time were so mad at him because they couldn't comprehend what Jesus was talking about. Jesus was saying, I am the bread of life. Unless you eat this bread. And Jesus spoke in simpler terms. He, he said, unless you eat this bread, you'll not enter into the kingdom of heaven. He wasn't talking about the manna that came from heaven. He wasn't talking about a loaf of bread that you buy at the grocery store. He was talking about him being the bread of life. Unless you eat this bread of life, unless you come to him with all your heart and with all your soul, with all your might, you'll not see the kingdom of heaven. And for those people who are playing church and those people who are riding on the curtails of their parents or on their grandmas or maybe there are those who are wanting to live for the devil or live for God but they want to live for the devil too or they want to do their own thing just as we sang that song this morning it's not our way but his way and there are people that are l wanting to live like the world and live because they are enticed with the word, with the world. And, and the fact is, Jesus said, you have to make up your mind. And I believe when he spoke that word, it went into the, to the future. It went into the por portion of, of people's minds. Not only when Jesus said the hour is coming, he's talking to the Father. But I believe those words were for those people today who have heard the word of God and they have dismissed it as something else. Or they have dismissed the Holy Spirit as he tries to convict people's lives of sin in their life. They have shut the Holy Spirit out. And Jesus was speaking to all of those people that are living today. And he said, the hours come. And I believe with all my heart, when Jesus said the hours come, he not only was speaking about when he would die on the cross. But he was speaking to you and I this morning. The hour has come. He's about to split the eastern sky. He is about to come in the clouds of glory. He is about to come in the rapture of the church. Amen. We are seeing it every single day. Those prophecies and those fulfillment of the word of God. A few months ago I spoke on the Matthew the 24th chapter. When Jesus talked about in the last days, there will be wars and rumors. We're seeing those things happen today. We woke up yesterday morning. Sheila and I turned on the television. We, the first thing we like to do is watch the news to see what's going on. And to our, our, our eyes and amazement and our heart hurt, we saw that Hamas came into Israel from, from the the Gaza Strip and attacked women and children and men and old folks and they shot them to death. They went in homes, house to house and began to shoot people and take them captive. Over 600 people are dead this morning and over 2,000 people are shot or, or injured in some way. That is Hamas. They are supposed to be following God, they said. They said, yes, Allah is our God. Allah is not a God. He may be the devil, but he's not God. Jehovah God. Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. He's 
God. He came in the form of the flesh and dwelt among us. He was the word that came. And he's still the word that lives. He's a living God. Our God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The hour is come. And the hour has come for the church to make up their mind which way they're going to play, which way they're going to worship, which way they're going to serve God with all their hearts or not at all. Now's not the time to play. Now's the time to be serious with God. Just as Moses had told the children of Israel, just as Joshua said, choose you this day whom you will serve. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. It's time to make up your minds. We don't have much time. Mm -hmm. What we're seeing in the Middle East is just prophecy being fulfilled. If other nations come into play, and they're looking right now, they're testing the waters. I asked the Lord, I said, what's going on? He said, they're testing the waters to see if they will come and invade Israel. But Israel won't be invaded right now. God will take care of it. Those are still, the Jews are still God's chosen people. And thank God through the blood of Jesus Christ, we have been grafted into the family of God. And there are brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God still loves them. So we need to pray for Israel. I would like for you, just right now, to bow your head and let's pray for Israel. Father God, we pray for the nation of Israel. This pastor and pastor's wife, this church, we stand for Israel. Because we know they are the chosen ones of God. You chose them to be your children. And Lord, because of the rejection of Jesus the Messiah, it blessed us to know that we have been grafted into the family of God. But they are still. There are those that already have turned to Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach as the Savior and the Messiah. And so, Father, this morning I pray that you would bless Israel, that you will keep your hand upon them and safely, Lord God, help them. I pray that the power of God will just surround them. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord God, I know you're doing this already. And I praise you and I glorify you in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Listen to what Peter said in 1 Peter, the first chapter, 18th verse to the 20th verse. For as much as you know that you were not redeemed with the corruptible things as silver and gold, from your vain conversations received by traditions of your fathers, he's talking to the Jewish people, but in the precious blood of Christ, as of the Lamb, without blemish and without spot, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of this world, but was manifest in these last times for you. We are living in the, I believe, the last of the last days. I believe with all my heart the rapture of the church is about to take place. Any moment, any time. And then hell will break loose. There will be a treaty. And this may lead up to what we're seeing right now in the Middle East. May lead up to that treaty. But there will be a treaty. Seven years. It was orchestrated. It will be orchestrated by the Antichrist. And in the middle of that three and a half years or that seven year in the middle, it's called the great tribulation period, those seven years. In the middle of that seven years, the Antichrist will come into Jerusalem. He will go into the temple. 
So that means the temple has to be built. He will go into the temple and he will proclaim himself as God. And he will have and command people to worship the image that he brings into the temple. And then the Jewish people will realize they've been fooled because they thought he was the Messiah. Hallelujah. But let me tell you something. From the foundation of the world until now and well into the future, Jesus died on the cross by shedding his precious blood and it was for you. Just think about that for a moment. Before the foundation of the world, before there was the foundation of the universe, God had a plan. He was going to create man, and he knew man because God is so omnipotent. He knew man was going to fall, and that man was going to see him. He was going to have to make a way for them to be brought to the Father. So he sent his only begotten son, Jesus Christ. Came into the world as a human being, a person. And he shed his precious blood on the cross for you and for me. That's amazing. That God, way back in the eons of the past, in the creation, before the creation of the universe, knew, had a plan. And knew. Hallelujah. By praying to the Father. To glorify. He said to glorify your son. Would affect the redemption of untold millions of people. And taking upon himself all the burden of human sorrow. And pain and suffering and sin. And he died on the cross for it. And that would not only exalt Christ when he was rose from the dead, but it glorified God. Hallelujah. Jesus was given power over all flesh, and he was and is the channel to eternal life. No man can come to the Father except through Jesus Christ. That's what the Word of God says. Jesus finished the, the work that he set out to do. In those few minutes when he was praying, he knew that in a few hours that he would go to a cross. He knew it, and he welcomed it because the Bible says he laid down his life. They didn't take it from him. He laid down his life for you and for me. And he knew that he would finish, and he said to his father, I have finished the work that you have gave me to do. And Jesus would receive the glory. He would receive the glory, sister, upon his glorified body when he was resurrected from the dead. Hallelujah. I'm reminded that when Jesus said that He's the bread of life. He also said this. The words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. And when he spoke those words, I want you to know what happened. When Jesus said he was the bread of life and that he said, the words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. There was a bunch of people that got up and left Jesus, I, this was a sad story. Jesus looked at them as they left. I remember one time in a service, sister in Tuolumne City, California. I had just gotten, gave my heart to the Lord a few months prior to that. There was a guy, evangelist, that was preaching. He gave an altar call. You remember me telling you this story. One of the deacon from the Assembly of God Church in Tuolumne City, his daughter was there. She sat in the back row. 
I remember I was in the front. She had a friend with her. Her daddy was the sheriff or trooper in California, Calaveras County. And as he gave the altar call to them, he spoke, you need to turn your heart and life to Jesus Christ. And they laughed at him in the back. We could hear them laughing. They didn't think it was important enough. Two young ladies, 16 years old, didn't think it was important enough. And they went out of the church. He went back there. I remember him going back there and says, please give your heart to Jesus. You never know what's going to happen. Give your heart to Jesus. This, the Holy Spirit can prompt him to go back there and talk to them about Jesus. Give your heart to Jesus. He went back there and talked to them. And they just laughed and they went out of the building. A week later, prom night, they were in a car with two boys. They hit a bridge. And the only way you could identify these two girls were their teeth. They had a choice. They had a chance. And when Jesus said, I am the bread of life, there were those people in who had said, we, we think he's the Messiah, we think he's the Christ. And, and, then, and then they decided, uh -uh. when he said, I am the bread of life. Unless you eat this bread, you're not entering into the kingdom of God. Let me tell you, unless you're born again, Jesus said, unless you're born again, you'll not see the kingdom of heaven. I don't care how religious you may think you are. Unless you are born again, you'll not see God. Oh, you'll stand before him one day. It's called the white judgment, white throne judgment. Those people left and Jesus turned to his disciples, his 12. He said, will you also go? And Peter, you know, he was always the one that kind of put his foot in his mouth. He was always saying things that was, you know, just he'd say something that he'd get in trouble. And Peter said, well, who shall we go to? You have the words of eternal life. I believe with all my heart there are people that you know, that I know, they have turned away from God. They're not living for Jesus. They're not believers. And I want you to know Jesus has prayed for you that do not accept Christ. He has prayed for you. When Jesus prayed his prayer, he was praying for his disciples, but he also was praying for you and for me. In the future, you say, well, I wasn't even born. Yes, but God knew you. He knew you when you were in your mother's womb. Isn't that awesome? He knew you before you were even born. He knew you before the universe was even created. He knew you. Mm -hmm. Is that awesome? That just, that's mind blowing to know that God knows you, knows all about you. He knows your inside and out. He, he knows your, your failures. He knows your, your, your bad habits, your good habits. He knows what you're thinking even at this moment. And that just blows my mind. Jesus prays for his disciples who were the fathers before they were his. Jesus asking the father to keep those believers whom the father has given him by the means of the cross and by faith. Keep them. To keep them under the blood. Keep them from the enemy of their souls. He told the disciples, he said, the devil would like, Satan would like to take you and shift you as wheat. Sift you as wheat.
and the most important one he prayed is that we might be one in unity and love. We'll get into that a little bit more next week, but can you imagine Jesus praying for unity in the body of Christ? Mm -hmm. He's praying for the disciples that God will give them unity and love. See, the Word of God tells us that those outside of the faith will know that you are Christians by the love that you have one for another. Isn't that awesome? Not because of what you say or the way you look, but the way you treat people. The church needs to repent because the church has treated people pretty bad. We need to treat people with love. How would you like to be treated? That's the way you treat people. That's the way I've always believed. If I want people to treat me with respect and, and, and love, I'm going to treat them with respect and love. Give them the benefit of the doubt. That they prove me wrong, well, we'll take it from there. Mm -hmm. What the church needs to do instead of clawing each other instead of talking about each other you know woe well, unto them that falls into the hands of an angry God we need to treat each other with respect and love the church hasn't done that too much too good over the years over the past we haven't the church hasn't done it we're ready to crucify somebody because they don't believe the way we believe or they don't think the way we think. They don't dress the way we, we dress. The, you know, they like the... The Raiders instead of the Broncos? <laughs> How dare them? That's the way it is in the world, but that's the way it is in the church too. Can you believe that? Love and unity. That's what Jesus said. He prayed for their love and unity. Let me finish this morning. I believe that never before the true church of Jesus Christ, those who teach and preach and practice the word of God must pray for one another. When's the last time you prayed for somebody, all of a sudden you just decided to pray for them? When's the, when's the last time you did that? This morning. This morning? Good, good. Wonderful. We need to pray like Jesus prayed. Pray like Jesus prayed. Lord, I pray for that one. You know, it's, it's, it's amazing to me. You, you want to see the power of love. When Jesus was on the cross, Paul, he said, Father, Forgive them for they know not what they do. I, man, I, that's something else. Somebody cuts you off or somebody stabs you or somebody, you know, stabs you in the back or somebody does something to you. You, you just want to take a something and pound them with it. But Jesus doesn't love your enemies. That's hard to do. You can't do it. In the human nature, you can't do it. You just want revenge. But with Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, you can. If Jesus is living inside you and the Holy Spirit is teaching you and showing you and helping you, because that's what the Holy Spirit has come to do. It's not a it, it's a who. He has come, hallelujah, to teach you and to show you and to bring comfort? Yes. Jesus said, I, I've got to go so that the Spirit of the Lord will come, the Holy Spirit will come, the Comforter will come. And He will teach you all things. All things of God. Hallelujah. I love that. Hallelujah. I'm getting ready to close this message this morning. There are so many other things that Jesus prayed for. 
The word world hates Christians. Did you know that? The world hates Jews. You know, someone not too long ago uh, said, I, I don't know, I think God has forsaken the Jews. No, he hasn't. Paul prayed for the Jews all the time. Even though he was sent to the Gentiles, he prayed for the Jews. He did. The world hates the Jews. Matter of fact, when Hamas went into Israel, you know what they were screaming? Death to the Jews and death to America. Why? Because America represents Christ. We may not be like Obama said, we're no longer a Christian nation. I believe with all my heart that as long as we stay true to God, he'll stay true to us. Amen. <clears throat> what we have running this government may not be Christianity, but let me tell you, there are those people who love Christ that are serving. Hallelujah. We need to pray for them and pray for this nation. Praise God. And stand for, for righteousness. It's because we are not of this world. That's the reason why they hate you. You're not of this world. I'm so glad I'm not of this world. I was, I'm in this world, but I'm not of this world. My citizenship is in heaven. <laughs> and one day my citizenship, you know, I got a one-way ticket to heaven. I remember when Sheila and I got on the plane one time and we, we had a, a two-way ticket going and coming back. And I was thinking, I'd like to have a one-way ticket. We'd like to have a one-way ticket to, uh, to the beach, wouldn't we? <laughs> that's, the way, that's the way we are. We, we just love the beach, Sheila and I. We love the palm trees, the beach, the, the ocean, all that kind of stuff, the sand. She looked, the first thing we do when we went to the beach, last time we went, she took her shoes off and she was in the sand. In between her toes, the sand. <laughs> but I've got a ticket. There's an old song that says, I got a ticket to paradise, but I got a ticket to heaven. That's better than paradise. Hallelujah. I get to see the Father, I get to see the Son. Hallelujah. I get to see the Lamb of God. And those loved ones who were faithful and true throughout his history, those who loved God with all their hearts and with all their soul, hallelujah. I've always wanted to sit down with Abraham. I did. I've always wanted to sit down with Abraham. He's the father of us all. I always wanted to sit down with uh, Peter. <laughs> sit down with Peter and say, Peter? Where'd you get off putting your foot in your mouth all the time? <laughs> he learned a lesson, lots of lessons. But he said that day, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus said, flesh and blood have not revealed this to you, but my father which is in heaven. Hallelujah. You read it this morning? They hate you. Because we're, we are here now, but we won't be here one day. Can you stand your feet this morning? We need pray for one another I'm not going to ask you to lay your hands on somebody but I'm going to ask you to raise up your hand towards somebody this morning towards your brothers and sisters this morning and would you pray for them this morning Father we pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ this morning we pray that you would bless them that you would lift them give them faith to live this way 
Give them faith to live. Give them faith to live for Jesus. Strengthen them. Help them. Encourage them. Not to give up. Not to turn away. Just as those other people had turned away in Jesus' day. But to hang on. Yes, Lord. To prosper in the spirit. Prosper in the word of God. Get the word in our, their hearts, Lord God. And build on it. And build on it. And build on it. Help them, Lord God, when they get down. When they get discouraged. To lift them up, Father. Oh, right now, Father, more than ever before in the history of the church, we need the Holy Spirit. We need your power. We need your glory. Yes, Lord. Father, give them your power and your glory. Give them your spirit, Father. Hallelujah. Help them. Encourage them. More than ever, Father, right now, Lord Jesus, lift them up. Yes, Lord. I pray in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Lift your hands toward him right now. Toward Jesus. Lord, we praise you. Hallelujah. We praise you, Lord. We glorify you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We glorify you. Bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We praise you and glorify you, Father. We take nothing away, away from, from ourselves. We take everything away from ourselves and we give it to you, Lord. Hallelujah. We give your glory to you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Honey. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. It's not about us. It's about Him. He receives the glory and the praise. Pray for Israel. Lift them up. Yes. Hallelujah. My, my sister, I, I'll tell you this real quick. My sister, she called us yesterday. Yes. And she, one of her friends, her closest friends, is 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 Jewish, and they, she called my sister Brenda and said, "Let's have lunch today." And so, my sister had lunch with her yesterday. And they were talking about what was going on in Israel, and she was telling her, she said, "Christians are standing with Israel." We who are believers in Yeshua are standing with Israel. As pastors of this church, Sheila and I, we stand with Israel yes. and for Israel. And we pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We pray for the peace of Israel. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, they're going to get saved. They're going to recognize Yeshua, Amashiach, Jesus the Christ, as the Christ, the Messiah. One day they will. And matter of fact, the Bible tells us in this first half of the seven-year tribulation period that 144,000, 12,000 from each tribe of Israel will receive Yeshua as the Lord and Savior and invite him into their hearts. And then God will rapture them out too. Isn't that awesome? Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. So pray for Israel. And pray for the church. Pray for your people. Hallelujah. Pray for God's people. The body of Christ. It's, you know, somebody said this nation is so divided. But sometimes the body of Christ gets divided. I don't, for some reason, you know, it, we become territorial. And we're so divided on, on situations, on things. Pray for the body of Christ that we would be united in love. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Are you ready to? Go with God. And, and God, God will, will go, go with, with you. you. Amen. God bless you. Shake hands, be friendly. God bless you all.